this <laughs> level of care and consideration from a police officer, a detective, to the prime suspect on a murder case is never afforded. And I assume it is because the person is is rich. I'm saying it. Okay. All right, I'm starting it. My name is Lisa Reeves. Oh, shit, it's so loud. It is insanely loud. So before I keep, I want to talk to you. I want to make sure you do understand your rights, okay? And that way I can explain to you what's going on and all that good stuff. Do you understand, okay. you understand yes. that? Okay. Today's date is May the 3rd, 2010. The current time is... All right, your first name is George. Yes. G-E-O-R-G. It's a Christmas miracle that we have JCS reacts again. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I did it. There's no I'm sad that way. it's going to end soon. Damn, they just... No way. Damn, they arrested the shit out of him. Trigger warning, this guy's voice is hella annoying. I don't know what that means. Why did you guys say, why did you guys come in and say you, you were searching for an assault? I never said anything about an assault. So much he did. You know, so much came in this way. I never mentioned to you anything. Just told you we're investigating something. I'm wanted to investigating stuff. So. Do you want me to call anybody for you, George? It's an interesting concept to think of how you might respond to what would normally be an easy question, especially during a circumstance where it becomes a terrifying dilemma. We ask that you contemplate this question while you put yourself in George's position, but not before you grasp the context of what brought him to this moment. It begins with 22-year-old sports scholar Yardley Love, a star lacrosse player at the University of Virginia. She is captured in this photograph playing in the second-to-last game of the season, clearly aware of the obstacles that lie in front of her, yet continuing to move forward, which is the circumstantial detail that turned this picture into a symbol for the globally recognized organization that would be founded in her memory. This would be the last photograph taken that day, capturing Yardley's last embrace with her head coach Julie Myers. Both were unaware this exact moment would soon be on the national front pages. On May 3, 2010, at roughly 2.15 a.m., Yardley's roommate returned from a night out to their off-campus apartment. Upon entering, she saw that Yardley's bedroom had been broken into, at which point she rushed inside to find her unresponsive on the mattress. She had blood coming out of her nose and severe bruising across the right side of her face. But the most alarming thing was that she wasn't waking up. Her friend called 911, who instantly guided her through the steps of CPR, which was then taken over by paramedics who arrived on the scene four minutes later. But their attempts at revival were unsuccessful, and Yardley was pronounced dead at exactly 2.47 a.m. At 2.53 that same morning, criminal investigator Lisa Reeves woke up to a phone call from the sheriff's office. By 2.59, she had arrived at Yardley's apartment leading the investigation, and by 3.50, confirmed that she had her first person of interest, which was 22-year-old George Hughley V, Yardley's ex-boyfriend, and the next several hours were spent gathering information before she knocked at his front door. She found out that George was a fifth-generation heir to a very wealthy American family, whose roots lay in lumber dating back to the 1900s. He was educated at Landon Prep, a prestigious all-boys private school in Bethesda, Maryland, with annual tuition fees of up to $50,000. George was the star player of the lacrosse team and became an All-American athlete. This led to a full scholarship at the University of Virginia, where he remained a key player in the starting lineup, and where he would also meet, then spark a romance with fellow lacrosse player Yardley love. They dated for almost two years. Hughley and Love's relationship was an on-again, off-again one, where they cheated on each other throughout, and that tempers flared both ways. What was going on with these two young people? What may have led someone to do what happened? These are just a completely unbelievable set of facts. Everybody watched the relationship. People were really troubled by it. They were scared for her. Nobody knew what to do. Yardley ended the relationship in 2010, just two weeks before graduation. Nine days later, she was found dead in her bedroom. And that same morning, George Hughley would hear a knock at his front door. 
He opened to Detective Lisa Reeves, who was dressed in civilian clothing. She introduced herself as a police officer, but mentioned nothing of the crime. She simply stated that she was conducting an investigation that could benefit from his presence at the sheriff's office. George's response was to lethargically put on his flip-flops, then walk over to the passenger side door of her unmarked police car and let himself in. Somewhat bewildered, Lisa got in fuck? and drove them to the police station a few minutes away without talking. It was around then when she noticed bruises. Okay, I gotta pause it here and say, <gasps> first pause is five minutes in. I mean, five this is minutes, fine. Okay, four okay. minutes and fifty-seven seconds. Okay, across the board, immediately, like super rich kid, like I, I feel like it's a. What you're seeing here is a sense of entitlement that is overwhelmingly powerful as a rich, rich lacrosse kid possibly doesn't even recognize that he could be implicated in this crime, or even if he is, doesn't care. ...using on his knuckles and cuts on his forearm, at which point George was no longer a person of interest. He was the prime suspect. I know I introduced myself to you at your house, but my name is Lisa Reeves. Today's date is May the 3rd, 2010. The current time is, I can't tell on that one, 7.52. Okay? I draw the papers too. What's that? I draw the papers still right now. Yeah. All right, your first name is George. Yes. <laughs> Right away, you'll come to notice that George is oblivious to the gravity of Important. the situation, and it would be very safe to assume that he no at this asked, moment though. is unaware that Yardley has died. He seems to believe that he's in as much trouble as he would be sitting in a principal's office, perhaps for getting in a fight at class or on the lacrosse field, and the sooner he provides a sanitized version of the truth, the sooner he'll get to go home. This, of course, ties in perfectly with the interrogator's opening strategy, which we've labeled warmth for the sake of this video. She will downplay the severity of his situation to a considerable degree while maintaining a friendly temperament with a sympathetic undertone. She needs the suspect to feel safe and secure for the time being, as the less cautious he is, the more information he's likely to give away. Then as soon as he locks himself into one particular storyline, the pressure can commence, which often leads to a suspect being laden with panic and contradictions. I'm gonna pause again and say that there ain't no fucking way this dude was writing his own drama paper Rich fucking spoiled kids like this always got some nerd that they're paying like uh, a couple a couple hundred dollars to fucking write their paper for them, okay? No shot. Sorry. Before we ask you any questions, you must understand your rights. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You Stop right doing a pause counter. Questioning and have Chat. One present during questioning. If you cannot oh, your chat's lawyer, doing it too? Provided for you. What? And if you're willing to talk to us now, you're going to start talking to you. <laughs> George has two options here. Option one is to remain silent, then allow his father to get him the most expensive attorneys in the country. <laughs> he would then have True. years to examine the evidence, evaluate the many options available, and then construct the most self-preserving storyline with world-renowned experts in criminal defense before they present it to a jury. Unfortunately for George, he takes option two. But before he does, rewatch the flawlessly reassuring manner in which he's given the final piece of the Miranda warning. <laughs> And if you're willing to talk to us now, you have the right to stop talking at any time. Okay, I gotta pause again. Pause counter three, I don't care. This <coughs> level of care and consideration from a police officer, a detective, to the prime suspect on a murder case is never afforded, okay? It is unimaginably considerate. And I assume it is because the person is, is rich, okay? Straight up. Rich white dude... I've never seen it. Either this cop is literally like running for historically best cop of the year award for every fucking year, or this dude is just straight up like, I mean, he's getting considerations, accommodations that I've never seen. Wait, Hassan. Yeah. Awesome. What? Okay, this is, I'm, I'm going to start pausing so I can respond to you. Okay. <laughs> but um, it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a tactic to get them to you know, say certain things and trap them into a certain storyline, No, I, I, right? I understand that for sure. But ultimately, a big part of, like, uh, developing a case, in many instances, uh, regardless of the warmth uh, that they're demonstrating, is by trying to get them to talk. And mm -hmm. oftentimes, like, cops will, you know, cops will do the, you know, oh, you can, you, we can get an attorney for you. But 
Never the second part where it's like, oh, we're going to be, uh, I'm going to be extra considerate and tell you like, we can, we don't, we, we don't have to talk to you if you say you need your lawyer. How many times have you and myself separately, independently watched JCS videos where cops will literally fucking be like, oh yeah, you want a lawyer? Okay, no. All right. Well, you know, you still should talk to us. You still should talk to us. You still should talk to us. I've seen so much rougher interrogation conditions, even if they are also being positive and warm towards the suspect. I've seen uh, infinitely, infinitely uh, uh, worse uh, structured interrogations where they just basically, like the, the suspect will ask for a lawyer and they'll still continue asking questions. Mm -hmm. You know? Anyway. White privilege. But maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. White Let's and watch. rich. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Let's watch. Oh, sorry. Sing for there? <laughs> okay, that counts as a pause. No, it doesn't. <laughs> and our will and call goes. And the time now is 7.53. All right. Let's kind of start. I'm going to kind of ask you some questions, and like I said, we'll explain things a little bit later. Um, tell them about your day yesterday. Played golf with um, our parents. It was a, a <laughs> father-son. Uh, good or bad. I went to dinner with my dad and my two buddies, and then, uh... Oh, God, this guy little, sounds like such a douche. <laughs> a oh, uh, God, I hate him. I already hate him so much. To talk to Yardley, and... Who's Yardley? Yardley what, is my former girlfriend. Okay. Which this whole thing's about, which I understand, but... George has now what? initiated the investigative subject matter himself. It's the perfect opening scenario <laughs> for the interrogator because she's given nothing away, making it more likely for him to reveal details that will contradict the evidence. When I went over to talk to Yardley, I... He sounds like Blastoise. I, I can't unhear it. No, he like doesn't. That's an insult to Blau. Like he he sounds like this sometimes. We He's such a Blau. no, no. This this does not sound like Blau. Yes, like, Blau literally sounds like this sometimes. Where he's like, oh, I can't wait to hit the pow. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing, like his surfer boy North voice. Carolina the week before, which is what he just referred to. And she was already like, oh, like freaking out, like you know, you can't go me, you can't go me, and I was like, I'm like just trying to talk to you. The investigation team obviously had no way of knowing this, and George has now confessed to the crime of second-degree trespass. More importantly, however, he's just confessed to initiating the supposed confrontation. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? That he was he's like, I broke, in, and, I broke into my girlfriend, my dead girlfriend's into, house. And the critical fact he can actually recognize and remember this will be used against him repeatedly in the future. That's insane. And, like, she, like, started being, like, like getting, like, all, like... You know, like really, like defensive. She was so I fucking like, killed her. It was yeah, crazy. Like, and, like, I was like, totally. I'm not here to like. I'm just here to talk to you. And she like got all like, like sat up. Like, her bed's against the wall. Like if it was in this corner, she was like up against the wall. And I was like, like we were sitting there talking, and like she started being like, like you know, like. Getting, okay, we like, need a light counter. Aggressive. Okay, it's a million already. After this, <laughs> and so I was like, "All right, like chill out, like and choke her a little bit." So just to recount what George said over the last 47 seconds, Yardley was defensive. While being in a defensive state, she backed up against the wall. She then became aggressive. George's response to this supposed aggression was to initiate physical contact. And she started being like, like freaking out. And I was like, "Listen, I'm not like here to do anything. I'm here to talk to you." What the fuck? Why would you think that? Hmm. In the past week, and and she was like, and like sort of like being like, "No, no, no!" Like, like hitting her head, like, st like stop, like like she's in the corner. I was sitting on the bed. I was like, "Stop!" Like I was like, we were like, "What the hell?" Like we were just gonna talk. So let's go back oh, half a I minute and dissect so what much. actually just happened there. And so I was like, all right, like, chill out, like, and choke her a little bit. He will now say the words, and she started being like, then simultaneously mimic a body colliding with the wall. He will then stop himself mid-thought and subtly modify the detail. And she started being like, like, freaking out, and I was like, listen. 
and she started being like like freaking out oh good catch he goes from illustrating yardley hitting the wall to as he states freaking out and she he seems to realize mid-sentence, this isn't the best way to explain her injuries. So he changes the detail to buy himself time. And she started being like, like freaking out. And I was like, listen, I'm not like here to do anything. I'm here to talk to you. He carefully shifts the topic from Yardley to himself and keeps it there for eight seconds before attempting to re-explain what occurred in a more self-preserving manner. And she was like, and like sort of like, being like, no, 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 like they like, hit her head like, no jury on the planet will believe that Yardley was voluntarily slamming her head against the wall with enough force to cause fatal brain damage. All George has done mm -hmm. here is give away the fact that yeah. he knows Yardley has sustained some type of head injury and now lied on By the way, about a how brilliant, it was brilliant detective work just letting Yardley this idiot down, speak. Like, I mean, <laughs> actually. And like, it was not at all like a good conversation because. <laughs> Oh, um, yeah? She was already, like, <laughs> she, yeah, I was, because I was she slamming her head me, against the she wall. She see me there. Okay. So what happened next? What happened next? And she was, just kept hitting her head against the, against the wall while she was sitting on the bed. And I was like, and I grabbed her and I like, shook her. I was like, stop. Like, we need to, like, and looked at her. I was like, we need to, like, talk about this. And, like, I mean, I was on, holding her arm and stuff. But, like, I, I never struck her. I never, like, what? hit her. Hit her like in the face what the fuck? Why is he like, saying that? Talking, she was so like, she was so like, oh, I mean, what's the word? Like, you know, like, like, flop. This motherfucker. What is he saying? This motherfucker has. He's insane. This is like levels of self-report that I have never seen before. He just straight up like sometimes we'll watch a a psychopath get interviewed by a detective and interrogated by a detective. And I mean an interview because they want the detective to know what they did. They're proud of it. This guy is just so profoundly stupid that he basically said he did the murder and then thought he could get away with it by saying, I just like thought the visor off and I definitely didn't do the murder. <laughs> Insane. Incredible. Also, one other thing I was going to say is this motherfucker has never written an essay in general. He can't even craft three sentences together without tagging on like 18 likes. <laughs> he doesn't know she's dead. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm saying like he, he basically is like self-reporting oh, that an assault that he, he assaulted his ex-girlfriend. He said former girlfriend. doesn't matter that he's not aware that she's dead. What matters is that he's aware that he's being called into questioning because of an assault charge, most likely. Okay. If well, if he, he if he doesn't know that she's dead, like is she having a seizure? Is that why she's like? Because the way he's just he's like describing her as like hitting her head against the wall herself and flopping, like he was making like the arm movements. Yeah, I. I don't know if he knows she's dead or or like the medical yeah, examiner you, they has say declared that? her dead or, or not. I don't think she. I don't think the detective has said anything. Yet. No, she. The detective has said nothing so far. <laughs> so I don't think she yeah, said. He's kind of doing all the work. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean he, he's carrying the burden here because, like I said, profoundly privileged. And most likely has never been in any real trouble. Or if he got into trouble at school or whatever, his parents have probably been able to get him out of it. So he doesn't understand the consequences of his actions right now. A fish out of the water, like, like so, like, all this. And I was like, listen, like, I'm not here to, like, fight with you or, like, do anything. Like, I'm here to talk to you. And, like, and she's like, no, 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 like, get away from me. Oh, oh my leave. gosh. You have to leave, you have to leave, you have to leave, you have to leave. <laughs> like, all this stuff. And I was like, all right, like, fine, like, but like, I want to talk to you after all this, and and like I was, I was like a little. Yeah, the detective is applying a technique a called "let him cook." You know, my <laughs> former girlfriend who, who like something happened last week. You know, and I was like, all right, like, well, so we were like talking over there, and I mean, I somehow we ended up somehow I was resting on her own floor, and I was just like, stop! I just like. And I was holding her. I was holding her. I was a little bit persistent. I was wrestling her on the floor. All further evidence that designates George as the aggressor. He's completely shut down his ability to argue any sort of self-defense claim. And then the conversation I could tell was just like, 
it was not going anywhere and nothing was happening and uh, she like went back to bed and I and I left. Right. And I went back home. Phase one is now complete. The suspect has unknowingly locked himself into a storyline that will put him away for a very long time. He's phasing up the right now. The risk of him shutting down or requesting a lawyer is no longer a primary concern. So the interrogator will now increase the pressure. She will confront him on certain elements that she pretended to overlook before. And the ideal scenario is to cause just enough panic so that he backpedals on previous statements and contradicts himself. All right, so you go over there. Knock on the door. Her front door is open. Mm -hmm. Her room door was closed. I knocked, like, like uh, you already, like, she heard me open the door and, and went in. All right. Went in where? To her room. All right. Straight to her bedroom? Straight to her bedroom, yeah. I mean. How'd you get through the door? Her door or the mm -hmm. front door? Her door. Actually, it might have been locked. Mm-hmm. It was. What? Oh. God. What the fuck? Yeah, what? <laughs> Why? Actually, what is he doing? Yeah, no, yeah, well, He's being honest, I guess. Because I think I put a hole. Yeah. You punched a hole through the door. Pretty sure, actually, now. Yeah, that you said that, yeah. What? Sure. Why'd you do that? Yeah, why? Well, I, I guess, yeah, when I, once I was in her room, she was, like, very, like, you know, like, or, like, da -da -da -da, not, like I don't want to talk to you. Da -da 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 -da. And she was very like you Your know, honor, the vibes were like, permanently I wonder, fucked. I wonder I why she was on edge. Your honor, you don't know, understand. Like, I needed to fucking resuscitate the vibes. Like I just wanted bad. to talk. Why'd you push her a very unusual time to interrupt a suspect in such a contentious manner. He was giving away self-incriminating information that could yeah, be used to establish Yeah, the second detective sucks. He was doing exactly what the lead investigator wanted. But Detective Ed has now stopped him in his tracks. It's a reckless maneuver at this point in the interrogation, oof. which Detective yeah. Reeves is no doubt Big conveying oof. at this moment through nonverbal communication. She now has to <laughs> let the suspect... They're doing... JCS reacts is so good. They're so good that they're doing reacts on the detective's, like, uh, it, it, the detective's body language, too. But it, he's right. They're right. They've done so many of these that they're just, like, they're professionals at this point. Uh, they, and, the other and, detective looks so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. No, a typical man just fucking barging in on the convo and, and wanting to have his voice be heard, you know, pausing the conversation, you could say. Anyway. Like, <laughs> respond as to not undermine their position. Because I want to talk to her. Detective Reeves will now bring his guard back down through a reassuring tone and gently guide his train of thought back to his grievances with the victim. She pulls this off in three questions. All right, we'll continue on. That's fine. Continue on. So you're you're talking to her, and she doesn't want to talk to you. Not really. I mean, and I mean, we talked though. Like there was parts where we were talking, and then like. You know what you're talking about? I mean, about so many different things. Okay. Like what? Like, like what she did last week. Mm -hmm. Like went to like Carolina. She went to Carolina and hooked up with someone Sunday when we were still trying to figure out things. And I was over there like, like to talk. Like I was like, this is like. This he he even gave this. the motive. That's insane. I was trying mm -hmm. to be He's better. like, that's and like my motive. Then, like, <laughs> you know, Your Honor, she, she cheated on me. The vibes were fucked. Knew. Like, how upset I was, because I've told her, like, through email, like, how upset I was, like, about what she did. And so I was like, and I sat on the edge of bed, I was like, listen, like, I want to talk to you, like, like, what you did was bullshit. Like, I was, that's not, like, okay. And I was just like, I, like, and, and she was like, oh, like, not like, like, you know, she's like, uh, like, you know, sort of pushing everything that she did to the back burner and like talking about like like you know like they like, trying to like put everything that she did like wasn't important it kept going to the point where she like i was like listen like Northern, like we have to figure like out what's going on and she was like i'm not i'm not, talk, I'm not talking to you and then she like pushed me like get out of here like like go and i was like no and like i was like be like we have to talk like so like get like when you're, when you're doing that what what are you holding on her 
on her arms. arms, like maybe up here. And like shoulders, yeah. Shoulders. Like, 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 come, like, like, come on, like, you know, and she, that's when she would like wiggle and like, like get away and like, you know, like hide in the, get in the corner, like really like. What the fuck? Aggress, like defensively almost. Even his like, the way and, he's describing it, like he would, would still get ended, punishment for bed, assault and, and at this laugh, point. Oh God, this is the, yeah. not going anywhere. How'd she get back in bed? Uh, we were like wrestling and we stood up and I, I tossed her, I pushed her onto the bed. I was like, go Tossed her like, onto the bed. Her. Did you touch her neck area at all? Did you choke her at one point? Um, oh my I God. May have grabbed her. Oh my God. Oh, come we like, dude. But I never like strangled her. Okay. Okay. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, during the whole like commotion, you know, like I, we may have, I might have grabbed her neck, but I never was, there, never was like strangling her. Okay. More detail that was unknown to the investigation. The fact that he grabbed her neck can now be used as evidence. It paints a more frightening picture of the incident with relation to the suspect's. He is going to super jail. This was an oh extremely damaging revelation super for George's jail. defense. <laughs> The discussion moves to the moment he left, and George admits that he took Yardley's laptop. Why'd you grab her laptop? What? Because I was so pissed that she wouldn't talk to me. I was like, I don't know. I like took it almost as like collateral, I guess. I don't know. It's it's not. His dad's lumber yard did logic, not produce enough wood to get this guy out of jail. Mm -hmm. I can I tell know. you that. Did you take anything There's else? No shot. The no. Nothing. No. He stole her mm -hmm. laptop. What so the? When, uh, when you left out of there, I mean, you saw that she was bleeding on her nose. She's now about to ask a question with the same implication for a second time. Notice what occurred the first time. Did you go back and check on her at any point? No, I did not. Okay. Did, mm -hmm. did you try to call rescue or anything to make sure she's all right? No, I did not. No. Why? The face of bewilderment, if there ever was one. It's very strange that he's so taken aback by such Caught a question, in four P. especially when you take into account the possible <laughs> outcome if he had actually called for help. One medical expert revealed in the courtroom for the very first time that following Yardley Love's brutal beating, had George Hughley or anyone else called for help, she might have survived. Uh, I didn't think it was like, in, I didn't think that she was like, in need of like going to the emergency room, I we she just got I mean a play. Why do you think that? I don't know. I mean, I, I did, did you say when you were and correct me if I'm wrong when you were shaking her, her head was hitting the wall. Well, that was in the beginning. That was in, initially when I walked in, like she was like up in the corner, like said, "Get like get out of here," like you know, like this. Mm -hmm. like, at, at any time when you were shaking her, did her head bang the, the wall? Put yourself in George's position and imagine Yardley had in fact self-inflicted her injuries. You would perhaps say something along the lines of, absolutely not. I wasn't hitting her against the wall, but like... Dude, like what like the fuck? in the corner mm -hmm. of like, if it were like, oh, like this. No, no, oh my... No. Really like, Wait, know, I, this I guy's mean, so like, stupid, like, maybe he like, literally like, did not realize that, that she like, was that actually in need of, you, like, do that, you know, like, emergency yeah. help. Like, bullshit, this move, guy's like, pretty like, dumb. Would, like, you know, like... And we're like, he never, what are you like doing like like that? Like, okay. She she has a pretty good knot on her head. That's why I'm asking how uh, that how how you can explain how that would have happened. I mean, I don't even know when that a knot. Mm -hmm. I mean, like on on the side of her head, she's been hit pretty good right there. So I'm just trying to figure out, did you hit her with something? No. Was that no, her I never, I never, never touched her. Or he struck her or anything. Well, you touched her, you had your hands on you No, know, yeah, no, I, I said never struck her. Okay. So you, you, oh uh, my I'll gosh. go through this one more time, make sure we're on the same page. So you're, you're pretty pissed at her from a week ago for sending you text messages. Do you have those text messages where she says she, uh, as you put it, fucked somebody? I actually might have those, yeah. All right, you got your phone with you? Yeah. Let's, let's pull it out and through it. Let's see if we can see those. He the thinks this is, is fascinating because it symbolizes <laughs> He thinks he's uh, pulling this out because he thinks this is going to help him. Like, probably. I, I assume he thinks, like, oh, well, you know, like, obviously that's why I went over to confront her and, like, was shaking her, you know what I mean? Like, but me meanwhile, she's, like, establishing motive. I think he thinks... Sorry, go ahead. What did you say? 
You think I think he, he thinks that like saying like, oh, she cheated last week is like justifiable in his actions. Yeah, no, that's. I think he doesn't realize he's in trouble. That's how dumb this man is. Yeah, exactly. Change. Mm. That, the that second pause doesn't count. His yeah, that space counts. To make sure that's two extra pauses. No, I was doing it. Phone. It was a courtesy Soon pause. After that, she will take the phone out of his hand and place it on the table. Actions that would be completely unacceptable in almost any other circumstance. There were, there were like, I guess what you call like a, like a, an ongoing <laughs> conversation, an ongoing like it's a message and it's gone. Okay. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's talk about how you, you entered. Entered. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Because to put your, to have put your fist. Through the door. No, it's actually my leg. I'm pretty sure. Your leg? Because that's why my leg's been Your leg? Yeah, you're right. Now, where's your leg? Yeah. How'd you get all the bruising on your hand then? This is all from lacrosse. This is all. That's pretty fresh right there, looks. This is all from my lacrosse game on Saturday. On Saturday. 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 This is lacrosse. all. This is all the difference. This is all from lacrosse. And that's I got whacked here. I remember, hundred percent got whacked during the game. Yeah, this is this like, is you're going to jail off. if you're relaxed, bro. When when you had her and you're shaking, did she scratch you anywhere? No. 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 She's a little girl. She's tiny. Yeah, she did not. No, she didn't. She didn't. Scratch she didn't try me. to hit you or anything like that. No. Oh my God! He so has no out. He literally—she's giving him yeah, an yeah, out. So that—that—that's how I got out. Yeah. Okay. And then I stuck my hand through and unlocked it and went in there. Oh, that's and scary. Okay. Everything else is for you. The detectives leave the room for roughly three minutes. When they return, it appears Ed is given the chance to lead with a few of his own questions. I, I know we we touched about what uh, what happened last night. This guy's gonna suck. I, <laughs> Set it up for me. Lead it up to me a little bit here. Why did you guys break up exactly? Why? Why? Yeah. Well, we are not. We are not from the same area. Right. Oh, okay. And <laughs> I'm going, or she wants me to New York, and I'm not exactly sure where, what I'm doing yet. But I'd like to move to San Francisco. Why'd you take her computer? I don't know. I have no idea. There's maybe maybe because there's evidence on the computer emails that you sent. No, there's no. I mean, you you can find. Oh, oh that's all terrible. And everything back and forth. Detective Ed now asks George if he Dumbass. held Yardley down on the bed. He's trying to subtly set the grounds for an argument of smothering, which isn't a terrible idea, but would be disproven by the autopsy regardless. No, no. Did you fall down on top of her? You know, rest on the ground? Wrestling on the ground for like a little bit. Did you wrestle on the bed at all? No, I never like, no. Never like, I mean, I shook her. No, I mean like, just kind of hold her down until she calmed down on the bed. No, if anything that would, I mean, I mean, if, any, if anything that would have been like, He's cutting floor. him off too. When he you're sucks. On the floor when her yeah. knees start bleeding, you're like wrestling around. It's got the same amount of head injuries that our boy has here. No, I mean. Is she screaming? No, no, she, no, she was no. no, she was not screaming actually. I mean, if I'm cracking, kind of, if I'm cracking my head in the wall, I'm gonna be saying, "Oh, yeah." Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, she was not screaming. Yeah. She should have been. Probably, I mean, what? maybe. What? She what? Have been. what? Probably, I mean, maybe. I don't Even know. she. I don't know. I mean, well, she was screaming when I first like came into the room. She was like, "No, like I'm not talking to you. Like get the fuck out of here, all that." But like, at any point before you said you you and this was your words. You said you tossed her on the bed and then you left. Yeah. All right. At any point before that, did she lose consciousness? No. Okay. What happened after you tossed her on the bed? Did she move? Did she talk about to say what? something? I mean, I literally tossed her on the bed and turned around and... Tossed her on the ground or tossed her on the, the bed? bed. Tossed her on the bed. I walked out the door. Okay. So when you tossed her back on the bed, in, in your mind, she's she was um, bleeding? But you said she was bleeding yeah. out her nose and, and you didn't you didn't feel like you needed to call rescue? No. After that? After banging her head and... No, she. I, Shaking I, I, her, and blood coming out her nose on the floor. 
Mm -hmm. No. There's nothing about yeah, like. You missed anything that no one asking right now? There's nothing mm -hmm. about like going going to get anything or going. You know, I don't know. I took the computer. George rambles about why there was no reason for taking the laptop for another 20 seconds, during which time Detective Reeves decides that enough information has been attained. Phase 2 is now complete, and the fate of Yardley is about to be revealed. These moments in interrogations are considered important for the purpose of gauging a suspect's response. It's believed that a sharp and sudden revelation can make it difficult to fabricate emotion. So in theory, this will cause a suspect to provide either a genuine response or a relatively obvious disingenuous response, which often comes in the pretense of shock or remorse. I mean, I guess that's where my logic was at, but mm -hmm. that was, which is... Well, I have to tell you I something. I think I know why you took the computer. In the midst of what would have been a flawlessly executed moment, Detective oh God, Ed jumps Ed. back into the laptop mystery. The suspect has essentially confessed to murder. This really wasn't the time for regurgitated conjecture over a petty theft misdemeanor, which Ed was clearly being advised of once again through nonverbal communication. This well, is insane. You, you, you alright? Go ahead. Right now? Go ahead. She's dead. <laughs> you killed her, George. Throw Ed in jail, too, honestly. She's dead. I think you knew that already. No, I did not. In our opinion, George is being truthful here. And yeah. we believe the interrogator feels the same way in this moment. I don't think I don't think he fucking. I don't under, think he knew. Yeah, he's dead. so fucking stupid. I think he's being truthful. How yeah. How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her, George. How the fuck is she dead? Because you killed her. George appears to be going through a delayed response. It's so foreign a revelation that it's yet to sink in. Once the shock settles, he refuses to accept it, and this denial appears to be a momentary coping mechanism before the reality of the situation truly hits him, which will happen at this time in the footage. Oh my god. She's dead? Yes. She's dead? Yes. She's dead? She's dead. How? How? I already told you how. You already told us how as well. How is she dead? You just told us. Oh my god. Bro, you slammed her head against the fucking wall. Like, yeah, that's how. That's how she's dead. What an idiot. You went in there to talk with her, but it got out of control, right, George? The detectives will now add further pressure to keep him talking. See, Suspects will often divulge information in these moments in the panicked attempt to save themselves. And in doing so, can they're trying to do good cop, bad cop, but it's literally like good cop, bad cop, yeah, skill you. wise. You <laughs> kicked in her door. She started to fight with you. You punched her in the head. You cracked, She's not dead. You cracked She's her head. Dead. You cracked She's her head dead. in the window or in the, in the wall. She is. She's not dead. I ain't BSing you right now. It's serious. I want to see. I want to see her. She's George, look at me. George. She is dead. You are not here to dance with us. You're, you're here because she's dead. The alcohol. I don't believe it. I don't believe it's it. It's true. I, dude, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. I, I don't believe that she's dead. How did you, how did, how I did don't you, believe that she's dead. How I she, don't believe that she's did, dead. Did you punch her? Did you hit her? How, she's, there's walk. no way she's dead. There's, she's not dead. I didn't, let's, I, let's I never did this. anything. I didn't, I didn't, I did not, I did not. Let's, let's calm down. I did not like hurt her. Like she's she's not dead. Let's calm down. Just out of protocol, what we gotta do is stand up for you. Okay, put your hands behind your back. Turn around. Relax. Relax. Right. You'll be alright. You cannot relax when you're handcuffed. Totally okay, dead. that's totally fucking bullshit. Dead, Please. Will you tell me she's not dead? Relax. Please. Will you tell me? You she's know what? Not I wish dead. I could tell you that, George. Twenty-two year old. Twenty-two, and her life is done. She's not, I can't, oh, it's so sad. Like that. Oh my god. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. I do not believe it. I do not believe it. Also, classic cop moment. Let's calm him down by handcuffing him. There's no way. There's no way she could be dead. Either the head trauma or asphyxiation. It, it, there was no asphyxiation. Okay. God, he oh doesn't God, notice. He doesn't God. deny the head trauma. Yeah. What was she doing the last time you saw her? She was like, she was like standing up with me. She was standing up with me. She was standing up with me, looking at me. Was she standing or holding you? She were was her standing up. up, looking at me. Okay. She's not Aww. dead. I know she's not dead. I know. Oh, hundred million percent, she's not dead. I did. 
can't all be dead. I know, I know, but I know, I hate you. No, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't, it didn't. It did not. It didn't. It didn't. And she was like, no, 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 like, get away from me. Uh, you have to leave. You have to leave. You, you, you have to leave. I was like a little bit persistent. Was I mean, she screaming? She should have been. I didn't kill her and leave. I didn't just... Oh, my God. I didn't kill her. I did not kill her. I did not kill her. I did not. I did not. There's no way I can do it. No way. No way. I want a lawyer. I don't believe this. I don't believe this. <sighs> there's no, there's no way. There's no way. There's no fucking way. So, what, 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 should I talk to someone? Who do you want to talk to? Anyone. A lawyer. <laughs> what do I get appointed to you? Okay, what do I do now? Go to jail? Yeah. What? All right, George, right now, I know you're, you, you no, no longer want to talk to us, that's why I'm just letting you know something. We're working on a search warrant right now, and what it is, is we're going to have to collect some stuff from you, like what's called a buckle swab, okay? She wasn't screaming because she was dead? No, uh, she wasn't dead, actually. Like, that's kind of an important part of this, is that if he had called 911, she would have survived. For an assault. I never said anything about an assault. Someone, someone, someone she could have been saved, but she probably was like so severely concussed and having internal bleeding. Do you want me calling anybody for you, George? From the head trauma. At the start of this video, you were asked what? to think of what you would do in this. Just, just pause, just pause the video. Situation. Oh, now you try and imagine what would be going Just pause it. Now, now you want me to pause it. You just don't want to rack up your pause counter. Be honest. Just pause it. Okay, well, you paused it last time. That was a year. <laughs> you paused it, and then I accidentally unpaused it. So that was you. You paused well, it. Well, because I can't, I can't hear, and also I can't hear you either. And just pause it if you want to say something. Just pause it. Okay. Well. Right. And also, every time you talk, that's an extra pause for your. That's talk. great. Okay, we're just making like rules up as we go along. <laughs> that's bullshit. Um. Anyway, we're gonna rewind ten seconds. Mm -hmm. And what were you saying? And um, I don't even remember what I was saying, so <laughs> it doesn't even matter because you just kind of cut me off there a little bit. It's fine, but I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for interrupting you. No, it, it's okay. Uh, but yes, no, I. <clears throat> I do, I do like pausing, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, just anything. As you might just gain a restorative outlook from both knowing the answer while not having to answer this particular question. But there is, of course, no possible way you will gain anything close to the newfound perspective George has acquired in this moment, which unfortunately for him is no longer of use. Let me call your dad. This is, we call it mom. Your mom? Does you like me to call? Can I talk to her? Mm -hmm. Can I talk to her? I don't know about that. What's your mom's name? Oh my god. What's her number? 301 How? Did you want me to call your dad? Or just her? She'll tell her. Mm -hmm. She can tell her everything. Okay. How? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. How is she? There's no way she could be dead. There's no way. Calm down. There's no I, way. There's no I way. legit believe. So I believe stupid. it. Like I think he's just a fucking idiot. I mean, he's abusive. He's a murderer. And I legitimately believe that he did not think he murdered her in yeah, the, in the, I, until I think this he's moment. So stupid. He's insanely dumb. George, go ahead, put your foot down. Oh my God. Yeah. These next few moments are a turning point. The leg iron seemed to initiate a shift in his constitution, and his denial will completely cease from this point forward. He will continue to ask why and how, but he will no longer reject the severity of what is happening. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, maybe don't break into someone's house and... Keep trying to talk to them when they say no. 
Yeah, I mean. Or shake them. Or, or fucking slam their head against the wall. Yeah, that too. Another thing that I was thinking of is like, he might have even done this. He might have been abusive like this in the past as well, which is part mm -hmm. of the reason why he was like so surprised that this time he ended life. up killing her. You know what I mean? Yeah. In this room? No, jail. Because, like, there's no way you just, like, pop off one time and start fucking... That's someone who is comfortable uh, being abusive with their partner. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Call my mom. No, I guess. Yeah, you do want to talk to her. And that is when you need your family the most, but... Also, wild. I I don't feel like. Oh, I was gonna say I feel like he has no remorse, but oh, I guess he does. Taken to the regional jail soon that was after so this moment, sad. he would go on to plead not guilty to murder and was held without bond for almost two years awaiting trial. It began on February 6, 2012. Well, testimony is now underway in the murder trial of the former UVA lacrosse player accused of killing his ex-girlfriend. For the first time. I'm gonna pause again. You know. They never use fucking bad photos in these situations too. Like they always use like a like a good photo, like a vanity photo uh, when it's like when it's like a rich kid like this. You know what I mean? Always. Mm -hmm. We have video of Hughley as he was led into the courtroom. Contrary to his appearance in the days that followed his arrest for the murder of 22-year-old Yardley Love, he appeared pale, frail, and gaunt. The prosecution presented a case that Hughley went to Love's apartment that night, busted through her bedroom door, and in some way struck her, causing blunt force trauma, which led to her death. We've also learned that on that night, George Hughley was exchanging what were described as playful text messages with three other women. Those messages continued oh. late into the night and even after the alleged attack. Throughout this trial, Hughley has sat expressionless, Ew. almost stoic at the defense table. All of that. And and this motherfucker was like already trying to move on and oh my god bro okay listen listen well they were both cheating on each other like okay he, I he mean, literally acted on his emotions and it's like big baby when he doesn't get his way but he's such a i know but I'm so but mad you don't just abusive relationships develop over the course of a long period of time oftentimes and it ends up piling on top of one another it's like here and there. First, it's yelling. Maybe the first time you establish physical contact is like, uh, uh, you know, an escalation, right? You don't go from zero to 100, which is why I said originally, which is why I said originally that he definitely must have uh, been popping off on her. Um, he was so callous, I would say, when describing, like literally just domestic abuse and assault before mm -hmm. he found out that she was dead which means that, like, he has a level of familiarity with said assault. He has a level of comfort with, like, both describing the assault and also uh, engaging in it. So I'm, I'm fairly certain that this is probably a routine offense, which is why he was so shocked as well, because he's like, oh, well, it didn't happen the prior times Before. that I fucking hit her. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, that, that, is, that is my suspicion. I think you're right. My <coughs> second suspicion is that he will get... <coughs> He will get like affluenza style lighter charges than you normally would in this circumstance. That changed today as this police interview was airing. Hughley began crying, was often pinching the bridge of his nose with his hands and looking down as he listened to the sound of his own hysterical voice. I did not kill her. I did not kill her. I did not. I did not. In court Tuesday, Hughley's defense faced an uphill climb. The most riveting testimony came from former UNC lacrosse player Michael Burns, who testified that one time while visiting UVA, he heard some yelling for help from Hughley's apartment. When he opened the door, he said, Said he found Hughley with his arm wrapped around there Love's it is. neck, choking her. Hughley then let her there go, it is. and she ran out of the room crying. A variety of medical experts took the stand this Wednesday, and they all seemed to agree that Love's death was the result of blunt force trauma to the head. This was followed by highly distressing witness testimony from Yardley's neighbors. The noise was so loud. This was such a violent death that they heard it downstairs. Oh my God, that's Kimberly Guilfoyle. What the fuck? That's crazy. Sorry, that's... uh. California Governor Gavin Newsom's wife that uh, is now uh, married to Donald Trump Jr. 
That's Sorry. Crazy. That's crazy. Unrelated that two to everything. Pauses plus two pauses for okay. that. Okay. Well, I mean, we're I'm running out the clock because like it's already we got like three minutes left. You know what I mean? And mm. also on top of that. You don't have to hear this part because, you know, viewers at YouTube don't experience this, but it's the top of the hour. So I'm going to run a six, uh, three minute ad break. Oh, uh, we can't relate. <laughs> no, we can keep going through it because if they no, want no, an no. interrupted broadcast experience, all they need to do is subscribe, which they could do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime or by getting gifted us up. Here's the three minute ad break now. And it sounded like a stereo crashing Wait, to the that's ground. that's messed up. Didn't help that the jury. You can't play the video while half your audience is watching ads. It's not half my audience. Luckily, most of my audience is subscribed already. So we, we should wait for them. Okay. That's crazy. There's only two minutes. Ting, thank you for the video. five gifted subs. Yeah, there's more people who are subscribed to my audience than not, and they're mad now that uh, we are not continuing with the oh with the, okay okay you're right you're right i'm sorry yeah. we, we right. got to cater to the the payers yeah exactly jury knew that she was alive for two hours before she died indicating that if george hughley had come to his senses he could have gone back there called 911 and possibly saved her life still the driving argument for the defense is that george hughley never intended to kill they say this was all a tragic accident that he does yeah, not he intended the bruise a life you know sentence, but instead Fuck her up a little a bit not kill come on a second chance guilty of second degree murder and thank you, you dean be me for the five a 26 year prison term came down george hugley was brought to court to hear what his lawyers idiot. plead for the judge to cut in half the 26 year sentence recommended by the jury judge edward hogshire did trim it back but by just three years the jury in this case recommended 26 years the judge changed it to 23 probably a small difference but but why would he do that it's surprising isn't it Considering yeah this why is a would woman he do that beaten to death in her own bed we think that george was convicted of a crime inconsistent with the facts and he received a penalty inconsistent with what the evidence would require there are no winners uh, in this case. With credit for the time that George Hughley has already served in jail, and if he gets time off for good behavior, he could be out in 18 years. And the family for Yardley Love has put out this statement saying, we find no joy in other sorrow. We are relieved to put this chapter behind us. Uh, As that for is... George, he was incarcerated at the Maximum Security Augusta Correctional Center for 10 years and has since been transferred to a prison work camp in Richmond where he's expected to serve out the rest of his sentence. The present consensus in the media Fucking, is that he, he got sent to the no gulag. intention of killing Yardley, but that his 23-year sentence is still appropriate, if not lenient, and that him being drunk to any degree at the time of the murder is not an excuse, nor does it lessen the culpability of his actions to any extent. He'll be released at the age of 45, meaning he will have the second chance at life Yardley was never afforded. You can decide for yourself whether he deserves it or not. Uh, a comforting prospect to this tragedy yeah. is the non-profit I mean, he got hit with a, 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 a the decent Love Foundation penalty, which is surprising. Messages, both on social psychology and preventative education. I did not think that Their he would get... website will be linked in the description of this video. I, I, thought, I thought he would get less than that. I thought he would get less than that. Um, there have been instances of like sexual assault, especially where like a, a, a person of that background will end up, you know, having their sentence removed dramatically, reduced dramatically.